ਸਤਿ what this morning long said my very well learned colleague who happens to be miss hajra sati i happen to be shahzad hasan khan and it's a beautiful rainy morning over here in islamabad on a fine thursday but first things first hello hajra assalam alaikum how are you feeling today wa alaikum assalam jazakallah khair thank you so much for introducing me so it's a very pleasant fine morning in islamabad and i'm actually feeling the cold and i was wondering that uh, is there any heater around somewhere so i can turn it on because it was so cold but mm. obviously islamabad looks finest when it's raining and especially actually we are located just across the foothills of the magalas and you can see such a beautiful wow. view of the magala where the clouds it is surrounded in the view of the clouds yeah, the magala and hills have actually been engulfed by the clouds as yes, well and yes. it's a sight to see yes, it's yes, a sight to yes. watch of so over everyone yes. who's actually tuned into PT world right now yes. and if you've heard us yes. saying that the site outside is beautiful please yes. make sure that you take out your kids because it's summer vacations time as well yes. and all of yes. those kids and mothers yes. are actually thinking whether what to do so imagine hajra that okay. i actually had this debate with my wife okay. where she was like that okay you know i need to put them in summer school and i was like yeah why do you have to put them in summer school you I know they just got off the school which means they are certainly supposed to be at home okay. meet their cousins go outside do some adventure and learn something other than books baba if the summer school is a productive thing so why not i mean but, but i do remember when i was i think in the college or in the metric so uh, my school had this summer school uh, in it and my mother put me into it and uh, there was all study 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 and nothing also i was a bit fascinated you know so summer school means some very extra curriculum activities and what not but i think we were fooled by the name <laughs> but uh, shahzad so i was reading a very interesting news a uh, few days ago i think yesterday and it was about that um the earth and the european space agency they have sent mock signals uh, to mars and wow. they have uh, they're trying to establish whether there's an extraterrestrial life are the aliens there uh, in their surroundings and uh, if they are there so they want to prepare themselves for um, such sort of eventuality where we are in contact with a and a lot of people say that the aliens might have a higher intellectual life or higher intellect than the humans i really don't know what happens <laughs> is but i do feel that um, so so the archaeological in the modern archaeology it is established that the humans which are present now they are at the highest evolution of their intellect yep. uh, but i certainly believe that the ancient humans were very intellectual and certainly they were at a very high point of their civilizations for example just take the example of the pyramids of the egypt true, right true, true. so uh, one can wonder that how can they create such a huge structure without any modern technology without any help without any uh, i mean progressing of the science and technology how can they create that right and and, and, and hajra in addition to that you know even if we speak about mathematics even if yes. we speak about statistics yes, you know yes. it's a contribution of yes. muslims yes. and the other day elon musk even tweeted that you know that we certainly need to value the contribution of the muslims yes. throughout you know the human life and, yes. I, and and it's great to see yes. but while we uh, kind of speak of it you know mm. the, there's only one thing which kind of uh, you know boggles my mind and that okay. is that for example if you are so keen to receive a signal from aliens <laughs> first of all yeah. you yeah. know the word alien they might not even like it if they are somewhere around us number But one no, number two yes. do you th- number two do you think that we are ready to kind of uh, you know show that hospitality to any other <laughs> species coming down right. to planet earth so i think we really need to be careful about yes. it yes. so this mock signal obviously ladies and gentlemen was sent Yes. by another satellite which was you know orbiting the planet as well so yes. we never know you know yes. so there there might be uh, hundreds and thousands of lives out there as well because there are thousands of galaxies outside the yes. world but right now i think we really need to focus on our planet so let's take a good yes, look at what's happening yes because we ourselves are degrading <laughs> it and making sure that it's not habitable in the first place True. so why i mean talk about the aliens and what not uh, but yeah the, the concept of alien is very fascinating the concept of extraterrestrial life or a life superior than that of human being because you see the science fiction there is this lot of conception of True. you know aliens invading the earth because humans are very stupid they're very yeah. arrogant and they're very ignorant also and um, if you want to see a wonderful movie on yes. this you know you can certainly watch battleship yes, i think i would recommend movies. that yes. you know and it's a sort of a film that yes. will give you goosebumps and you know when you think about aliens yes. god forbid it can be really dangerous for our planet yes. as well yes yes i mean this is what the science fiction is telling us but we will certainly know whether they are dangerous or not 
when we have established contact with them, right? They might not be as bad as we think, right? I think our phone is not taking. Yes. I think there are so many other yes, problems. Yes. Yes. So, uh, so moving on to our top stories, which is of course related to the extraterrestrial life and the space <laughs> and whatnot. So, Saudi astronauts um, Rayana Barnabi and Ali Al Karni concluded their 10-day historic mission on the International Space Station and uh, returned all to Earth after their successful mission. Saudi astronaut uh, became the first Arab female astronaut in space. The SpaceX Dragon began their return journey, which takes about 12 hours before reaching the water, announcing the end of the AX-2 space mission launched by Saudi Arabia on May 22nd as the first Saudi scientific mission towards the space. Exactly. And you and know, Miss uh, Rihanna Banavi was actually a civilian astronaut yeah, as well. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I think it's a pride moment or it's a proud moment for the, for the wonderful lady who's actually kind of got to experience the outer space as well but very quickly ladies and gentlemen because just yesterday Hajra yes. my car was on reserve and I was okay. like okay you know whether I should go put in the fuel or not and so I was lazy enough you know yes. I didn't do that and you know even today while I was driving to work <laughs> yes. I was like okay khatam hi na ho jai. Yes. but ladies and gentlemen here's the good news because finance minister yes. Mr. Isagdar announced that the price of petrol was reduced by rupees 8 while high speed diesel price has been slashed by rupees 5 per liter for the next fortnight. In a video address, the finance minister said the new prices of petrol is rupees 262 and diesel is rupees 253 per litre respectively. The price of light diesel oil was also slashed by rupees 5 per litre to rupees 147.68 while the price of kerosene oil remained unchanged at rupees 164.07. The finance minister said that the government tried to create as much room as possible to provide relief to the people and we are glad, we are thankful, thank you so much for impacting and touching so many people's life because this happens to be one of the most core issues for Pakistani yes. people. Yes. Yaar, patrol the badi ki. yes, that's very true and that's a very pleasant news to strike our screens and especially in a very pleasant atmosphere, in a ple very pleasant weather because it's raining outside and obviously those who want to take a ride, long drive around Islamabad, they can certainly plan <laughs> in doing so because the prices have been slashed yeah. in the first place. Uh, so uh, we are uh, now moving on to our segment which is about um, the o uh, Oil and Development Authority and how does it interacts with the environment around there. So yeah. we are very glad that we we have been joined by uh, one of a very pleasant personalities who has uh, and, and we are very glad that uh, he has come to our studio. So we are very glad that we have been joined by Chairman Ogra. He happens to be Mr. Masroor Khan. Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much sir for coming. Wa alaikum assalam and thank you very much for uh, inviting me to your program. Talking about the weather, I mean <laughs> it's unbelievable yes. that we are in June. And yes. last night I was trying to figure out where is my sweater. Exactly, <laughs> I, I know. I it's know. amazing. Yes and, yes. and you know, finally in summers on the yes. first of June, we are wearing suits and it feels wonderful to be yes. wearing suits as yes. well. But it's yes. wonderful, sir. Thank you so much. The pleasure is all ours. But to get started. Now, sir, to be very honest, you know, whenever you are in conversation with a bureaucrat of your status, you know, the best part is that the life wasn't always the way it has been now. Alhamdulillah. So imagine that, you know, if we are to yes. kind of ask, who Mr. Masroor Khan is, other than Chairman Ogra. You know, a lot of people might not get a chance to ask this question. So your early childhood, you know, you brought up. Yes. Because my father has to share a lot of stories about that light not light, we were sitting down and sitting down. So was it that sort of a journey or was it a very modernized uh, journey for you? So I would say something in between. Okay. So I won't take anything, uh, a very extreme view. Uh, my parents, they moved from Jhang Punjab to Karachi. So I was born and raised in Karachi. My father was in Air Force, so I was born in Masroor Hospital, Karachi. So I end up having a name uh, Masroor. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Just a coincidence. <laughs> uh, I went to school in uh, Karachi in the Army Public School, went to college in Karachi, and I went to NED Engineering University in Karachi. So all my education has been in Karachi. My, I started my career. Uh, at Karachi International Airport as a planning engineer when wow. Civil Aviation was building it <coughs> back in uh, 1988, 89 it was finished. Uh, so I joined uh, Karachi International Airport project and after that I joined an international oil company. Okay. And I spent all my life, the remaining part, the 28 years with, with that international oil company. So I was involved in uh, various uh, engineering and petroleum related activities uh, predominantly in uh, Far East regions, Middle East regions, in London as well. 
uh, but again, I was mostly based uh, in Karachi out of those 28 years. Wow, that's wonderful. But sir, you know, to be very honest, because it's been a decade, alhamdulillah, that I've been working for PTV and uh, initially it was my will that I had to work for PTV and kind of change the way people think about PTV. You know, so imagine Hajra, me, all of our anchors, young, amazing, talented, and you know, can actually be out there representing Pakistan. But for you, don't you think that, you know, there comes a time in your life and your friends start telling you that, okay, you know, you've given 28 years to one company. What are you doing? You're going to be stagnant somewhere in life. Yeah. Why don't you shift? Career Why don't you jump on to another yeah. career line or career path or yes. change another yeah. company? 28 years is such a long time. So what was your take on that? Because a lot of people are listening to you. You happen to be the chairman of Ogra, so you made a successful life, Alhamdulillah. So what's your take on this? I think it's a very important question. This is exactly what happened to me. Uh, two years back, when I was uh, 57 years of age, and uh, I was in that international oil company, enjoying very good job, very good perks, everything sorted, looking for a very uh, nice retirement uh, plan. But then this opportunity came in, in the federal government. And I thought that uh, there are certain bits which I was unable to accomplish True. or contribute, that's the right word. True. And that is the area of safety. Okay. Because I had the opportunity of uh, watching petroleum-related activities uh, in various parts of the world. And I noticed that uh, those operations were quite safe. Right. But over here, unfortunately, I witnessed myself people losing their life. True. Okay. Um, I was part of few investigations where there were massive fires, okay. uh, accidents of uh, massive destructions. Mm. And I thought that this is the time for me to contribute uh, back to my countrymen. But, but sir, obviously you have been the chairman of the OGRA and uh, if you analyze the modern discourses surrounding the oil and petroleum, so there's a lot of focus, especially uh, in the conversation around the climate change that we need to transition towards a cleaner energy, greener energy, right? So where do you see the future of oil and gas development and that too with this discourse around cleaner uh, transition towards the energy? We have no choice. We have yes. to follow that path. Right. Now, the amount of money which we are incurring in Pakistan in importing oil products, it's not sustainable. Yes, of course. So the oil industry today stands at 35 billion US dollar trade, mm. as far as Pakistan is concerned. Yes. Now, out of the 35 billion, mm. 20, 22 billion dollars is just petroleum products. Mm. We import in the last 12 months 5 billion dollars of LNG. So we have to go to these renewables, we have to go to these alternate uh, options and we have to move toward <coughs> energy conservations and efficiencies. Look at the amount of energy which is wasted in Pakistan mm -hmm. and yes. people don't have money. So yes. this is the awareness we, which we have to create collectively. I mean just yes. Ogra cannot do one thing. There is another authority yes. which has been created by government. They cannot do it alone. It is the awareness where everyone has to contribute. But, but so all the stakeholders all need, to, need to come correct. in. And, and sir, while we actually speak of it as well, now, there's one more problem and that is that obviously you have, uh, uh, you know, a lot of experience yes. on your shoulders, Alhamdulillah. You've seen the, how private industry works. Now you're into public institute as well. So now what I have seen is that, you know, when people, you know, they, they settle down on the seat of a chairman, what they do is that at times just because of few pressures, which obviously are a part of your job, they are unable to take those decisions which yes. are important yes. for the country and for the institution at the same time. How do you think that you kind of face all of those everyday challenges that okay no matter what happens you know i'm going to be true to ogra and i'm going to be true to pakistan and i'm going to take those decisions which are important for pakistan and ogra as someone says life is all about choices and we have to prioritize our tasks right true. similarly this is the same case i mean i am here one of the reason i'm here is that i want to engage everyone who is listening and watching us our key message around safety and energy efficiencies, right? Similarly, day before yesterday, I was in the uh, energy uh, workshop here in Islamabad, and my total focus was to uh, address those issues which I have been preaching all around. Now, when you talk about the official challenges and the red tapeism, which you are basically referring, yes. they will always be there. You have to prioritize your day. Yes. The day will only have 24 hours. You will never get a day with 25 hours. So yes. you have to set your scene. You have to set your pace. And as says, uh, leaders set the tone. So if the leader is setting the tone, then people down in the Ogra, Before. they will also be listening and trying to implement our agenda. Exactly. But, but, but those people but who actually bring you in will, will have a lot of expectations from you too. So how would you, how would you kind of curb around that? 
I don't think it's difficult. Okay. I don't think it's difficult because the challenges which we encountered in Pakistan and the reason for which I switched from the corporate sector to the government sector, uh, I think the uh, senior people over here are fully aware of those uh, challenges and they, they are listening. I think the most important thing is that whenever we give suggestions to them, they not only listen, but they try to help. Wow. But, but Masoor sahab, you alluded to a very important point during a conversation and you said that we need to focus on the conversations uh, which are hinging around the cleaner mm -hmm. energy, right? Uh, but obviously when we talk about the cleaner energy and obviously when we talk about the oil and diesel, so we do not have a very cleaner alternative in place, right? So for example, the high speed diesel uh, cannot be replaced by any other alternative which has been, I mean, introduced in the market as of yet, right? So when you talk about that we have to uh, follow those conversations because climate change is a reality and obviously Pakistan is really badly hit by it. Um, so what are the alternatives available? Uh, or, or do you think in the future they are going to come into the alternatives? Of course, you can't okay. uh, avoid them. Right. They are knocking your doors. These electrical vehicles, True. these electrical yes. bikes, these solar powered uh, stuff, they're all uh, around the corners. Yes. But there is a time which is required to have this transition. Yes. So it will not happen overnight. Because all these uh, initiatives are capital intensive. They required a mm. lot of dollars oh. to be injected. Yes. So it will take them some time. Mm. But it will happen. It yes. will happen. But, but sir, but when, but when most of the time, yes. sorry Aja, but when most of the time we say that, okay, you know, it needs a lot of investment, it will take a lot of time. We've yes. been around the world, you know, and we've seen that how, yes. you know, probably Britain has prepared smart motorways already for their electric vehicles. Yes. There are new places yes. coming in where at every spot you can charge your vehicle as well. Now, we are to, uh, uh, while we are in conversation with Chairman Ogra, why don't you put some light on that? For example, now Ogra is Oil and Gas Regulatory Authority. Do you think that in days to come, it will expand its forte? It will make yeah, sure yeah. that, you know, we bring in those electric vehicle policies as well and what really needs to be done in terms of solar panels, yes. clean energy. Are we doing it? Are we on paper now? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So yes. they are not on just drying boards. Okay. Yes. So they are happening. But as I said, there are phases which we have to accomplish. It mm -hmm. will not happen in, in a very short period of time. Exactly. And, where and you sorry, sorry for yeah. interrupting you. I think one thing which is very important and uh, it is more to do with the, the drying boards. It has to do with the mindset. Yes. I mean, a very basic thing is if you are driving a car from yes. uh, Islamabad to Lahore yes. and the car has, let's say, seven seating capacity, why there's only one person sitting in the car? That's true. <coughs> yes. I mean, 75% of the petroleum products which are consumed in Pakistan, it's imported. True. Now, the remaining 25% is produced by our five refineries. But again, those five refineries, feedstock is a imported crude. Hmm. True. Hmm. So it's just 18,000, 19,000 barrel of uh, local crude which is being fed into the five refineries. Remaining everything is imported. So, so right. think about that example and, uh, and, and please try to educate all our audience that if a vehicle is yes. moving from Lahore to Islamabad or vice versa, yes. it should accommodate uh, the and, seats. And, and I think True. our state is also moving towards having a public transport system which is more affordable, cheaper and also more cleaner. For example, uh, metro systems and all of these trams. Uh, I think Western capitals are very well versed with the concept of the public transport, but Pakistan is also moving towards that. And I was, uh, and it's really, uh, I mean, appreciable that Pakistan also has the electric vehicle policy. True. But sir, coming back to the debate of the electric vehicle policy, do you really believe that uh, it's a source of a clean energy? Because of there's a lot of debate going on that. Uh, the batteries. Yes, the batteries take a lot of uh, resources and it's uh, not, and they do not decay that easily. So there's a lot of greenwashing that is going uh, on. I think the problem which you mentioned about the batteries is a problem of United States, not for Pakistan <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> we should rather focus yes. on what's happening today, what we can do today. To Today and tomorrow. But we should, fo we should yeah, yeah, also course, focus on course, making batteries ourselves. Now, you know how, yes, yes. for example, if you mentioned that, you know, the crude oil is yes. actually imported from outside by all the refineries yes. we have, which are contributing only 5% to the, what the requirement is of the entire country. I think that we really need to be on board. On yeah, that. in the medium to long term, that will be a challenge. Exactly. And, and sir, in addition to that, where you actually spoke that, you know, you've seen yourself that, you know, how... God forbid the practices aren't really that nice. You know, for example, if you are on GT Road, we'll see yes. a truck full of LPG, uh, uh, yes. whatever you call them, or tanks or uh, cylinders. Yeah. Yes, yes. Cylinders and, you know, people are just throwing cylinders here and there and yes. whatnot. You go to any hospital, that's how the, um, that's how things are. And, you know, yes. there's no safety precaution. 
measures which are being undertaken yeah. by any of the employee probably as well and yes. for all of those people who are actually distributing or are made sure to be there for the supply chain yes. how do you think that you know that you're going to make sure that you know that this security which people need require while being on road while distributing while supplying will be given to them how do you think that ogra is making sure that they're going to make people more aware that this is a malpractice and we really need to yes. change it this is a very very important question and it is very close to our heart in ogra now, if you look at the supply chain of LPG, which you just mentioned, there is a serious compromise on these standards. So as a regulator, we specify the standards okay. that the Bowser should have this minimum thickness of MS sheet, the type of welding, the specification for welding, everything is specified uh, by OGRA as part of uh, regulations. When it comes to these LPG cylinders, again, all those standards which are required for those cylinders have been uh, specified by, by OGRA. Okay. Now, that's the paperwork. Then OGRA issued licenses. It's also done. Now, when it comes to implementation on ground, now, LPG came to Pakistan back in 1968, whereas OGRA came to its existence in 2020. Okay. Sorry, to, uh, 2000, which means 2000. we are just yeah. uh, 22 years of age. Now, what has happened is that uh, this LPG business has grown exponentially in the last few years. Yes. And from Karachi to extreme north of Pakistan, you will find LPG cylinders, you know, being penetrated into every True. single small uh, market, into a small segment of the business. So, because of this compromise, there are accidents which are being reported and there are accidents which are not being reported. Okay. So, we have combination of two. So, unfortunately, these incidents are resulting in fatalities, injuries. Again, some are being reported and some are being unreported. So, what we have done in OGRA is that uh, A, we have uh, developed a enforcement teams. So, our enforcement teams are out there in the field looking at uh, these cylinders and these bowsers, educating these distributors, educating these LPG marketing companies. And since this is a huge task, what we have done, we have also uh, engaged the district administration because they are also part of our True. team. And the district administration also help us in making uh, all these rules and regulation being implemented on ground. But I will use this forum to educate our audience uh, in the country that, hey, when you are buying LPG cylinder, please make sure uh, you are buying from which source, okay. what is the uh, company's name, how it is being branded and there, there is a certain uh, stamps which are being imposed at the bottom of the cylinders, please look at it. And then there is a very simple thumb rule that is the weight of the cylinder. If suppose the weight of the cylinder has to be 10 kilogram and you can easily check if it is 3 kilogram or 4 kilogram, mm -hmm. yes. then you are basically buying an office specs uh, cylinder. Exactly. And we should make sure whether the, the vendor we are buying from Absolutely. is licensed or not as well. Yes. Then it's not just a cylinder. Then there are certain components to it like the regulator, like the valve, like the hose pipe. True. There are serious compromises in the market and you yes. can buy a very, very cheap stuff. Now, these cheap stuff uh, can cost uh, human yeah. life. Yes. I think that is something where we need uh, awareness across Pakistan. Right. Exactly. That's wonderful. And sir, very quickly towards the end, two, two last questions. That is that obviously while we speak of OGRA, we have another organization working and that's OGDCL as well. So, do you make sure that at some point you join hands together and make sure that, okay, you know, let's yes. explore for more avenues, you know, let's explore for resources within the country. And then after, after that question, what I would certainly want to ask you is that, you know, as chairman, obviously you're under stress at times, you're under pressure. What do you do to release that pressure so very quickly? So you got um, two, two parts of your yes. question, right? So coming back to the first part of uh, OGDC, OGDC being an upstream company yes. and we in OGRA are a regulator of midstream and downstreams. We do not uh, regulate upstreams. Okay. However, there is an interface. Whenever there is an uh, gas discoveries, it's the job of uh, OGRA to come up uh, with a wellhead price. So what we do at OGRA is that we ensure that all these wellhead prices are being uh, uh, calculated uh, on a timely manner so right. that there is no delay in the supply Wonderful. chain and the gas molecules are up and running in the transmission and the distribution system without any delay. So that's the first part. So that's basically is to ensure that the supply chain is not uh, disturbed. disturbed. 
and your second question was around so so as a chairman obviously there might be a lot of pressure you know a lot of time you okay. really need to be in time as well time limits right so my mm, leisure hour activities is number one i do walk uh, i i read a lot wonderful and i talk to my two daughters Mashallah. both are in us uh, so they are in different time zones right so that's keep me busy yes yes wow that's wonderful Thank and very quickly said towards the end it looks like as if you know because we have been interviewing yeah. people for the last 15 <laughs> years now when i look at you it looks like as if you're into poetry too as well so if there's <laughs> anything you would want to share with our audience please go ahead ladies and gentlemen coming straight from chairman ogra's mouth please sir anything anything no, no, you no, would no, want no. to share I, I i will refrain from poetry but i would rather g- try to uh, give a positive message sure, rather than sure, uh, sure. reciting something from the book uh, and i thought uh, this is the right forum and and and, and i would like to give a message to my youth that uh, they should be optimistic this is your camera sir yeah so they should be optimistic they should avoid all these uh, pessimistic and negative uh, messages uh, which we generally receive yes. and uh, their key focus should be on uh, what they want to do in their life wow that's right. wonderful right. sir thank you thank so you much so for much. being with us lovely thank to be in so conversation much. with somebody who's actually yes. lived a very focused life ladies and gentlemen i think that was the message which i wanted to come across you know for our audiences which are out there as well but thank you so much mr masrur khan sir please manogra for being with us lovely to be in conversation with you and when we meet people like you it actually kind of gives us confidence that pakistan is actually in right hands and in safe certainly, hands as well and certainly true. ladies and gentlemen that's how it is but yes. very quickly we really need to head out towards a short break yes. after a short break when you guys will come back we have to do talk about something what we eat you know what makes us yeah. fit because if pakistan is going to be so developed i think the nation really needs to be healthier <laughs> yes. as well after a short break good morning Welcome back and nowadays I think Shahzad we are talk, talking a lot about holistic wellness right yes. and I hope it translates into a younger population because like Shahzad mentioned so we need a good and healthier population so that they can work more productively uh, towards the development of Pakistan so holistic wellness or the wellness the concept of the wellness is a very huge concept right so for example um if you are feeling well in terms of your health in terms of your spiritual health in terms of your physical health it definitely impacts the environment around you right exactly. and the sort of the vibes that you give to the environment around you uh, and also the it is very uh, pertinently said that the food we eat reflects the priorities are we make right i was listening to a documentary and there was a very uh, interesting comment that someone okay. made and obviously um, that food choices reflects the way um, that we work and the energy that we put in exactly and hajra even the way you smell you know certainly so whatever you are <laughs> eating ladies and gentlemen entire right. day your body will be an image of what you ate yes. but very quickly i'm going to give you a very wonderful example and that is that right. so imagine that people when you, they start to get rich you know so what do they think about okay. they think about okay building a newer house okay. buying a new car they would never think about improving their diet but yeah. rather i think that what people really need to prioritize if they have some extra bucks in your pocket is their health yeah. so imagine people would save money you know they will starve themselves for two uh, two years three years time while they're building their house god forbid right. they build their house but they certainly weren't eating very well yes. and unfortunately they were unable to live in that house so please yes. don't do that yes. please make sure that you always yes. eat healthier and to talk about that ladies and gentlemen what yes. are the demand and trends of nutrition yes. or healthy diet we very lucky yes. that we've actually imported a guest from all the way karachi over here to islamabad as well she's a wonderful nutritionist ladies and gentlemen we very lucky that we've been joined by ms hina anis hello assalam alaikum good morning how are you hina wa alaikum assalam and a very very good morning to both of you hajra and uh, shahzad thank you so much thank for joining so us much. it's always wonderful to have you thank over you here so, so the topic itself says quite a lot so what yeah. are the demands and trends of healthy diet let's get started before getting a start as continuing by your uh, saying a wonderful topic is like your wealth is your health true i mean we always said health is a wealth health is a wealth since agents we are yeah. we are listening that particular sentence but i must say your wealth is your health exactly just yesterday yeah, i had just, to 
I had to actually spend forty thousand rupees on my gym fee and protein ah, and whatnot. Exactly. I was like, yeah, oh, okay, if you want oh to be gosh. healthier, that's certainly the price you need to pay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly, and this is what is holistic wellness. My brand is holistic nutritionist wellness concept. Yeah. It's not a particularly uh, conventional type of a clinic where you come in and enter and get medications and go away. No, it's a clinic. It's a place where you learn your lifestyle. Your holistic lifestyle. Okay, so okay, let, okay, let's learn okay, that lifestyle. Okay, okay, so yeah. I'm sorry I'm cutting you. Yeah. But if someone, he's not as well off as Shazad, who does not have rupees 40,000 to spend on his gym and on his dietary yeah. habit, so what options that a person has in order to have a very improved uh, healthy life? Or do you think that it's only rich who can afford a healthy they life? They should have no, a membership of DHA all. Club since the live in DHA. I don't have a membership of Okay. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> Each and every single Pakistani can be wealthy Fine. with their health. True. And how it is possible? How? Allah Ta'ala given us the roads, the gardens, the uh, walking ways. You yes. can go and walk. Don't Saat go to... Don't. Mil rana, jise da walk pe ja, ja, ja you are... I, so I'm so I, excited I walking, to go on a walk. Is best but I certainly do not have a partner. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Walking Please. is best at solitary activity. You are your own personal friend. I mean, when you walk and you meditate, at the same time, it's it's a best thing to empower yourself. Yeah. It's the best thing to get positive energy around the uh, places where you are. It's the best thing to True. breathe alone, to exactly. recover you alone. It, yeah. It's a perfect thing. I think thing. I'm, I'm, I'm just the sort of a person who does not want to be alone. Because imagine when I'm working hard, I'm alone. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm going to the gym, I'm alone. When mm -hmm. I'm spending, I'm alone. You know, so all of these things, I mean, I'm so alone. Many, so so at least a walk should actually be my retreat with, with somebody. Yeah. Now. If, if you, <laughs> That's it. But where you can like okay, it. so walk, you know, you can walk. go anywhere. Number one. And number right. two? Number two is to cut down all the bad dietary habits from your life. Instead of Genial. having, yeah, instead of having deep fried thing, why can't we make a steam and a grill thing? At the same time, we'll be saving refined oil. Yeah. We'll be saving money, not True. spending money. True. Whatever what we are eating, we can steam it, boil it, grill but, it. But every time I go my go back to my place and you know I'm like me or you know to my wife that okay this is what I want to eat. So they're like Jo Paka bai khalo ni khana to bayse mangwalo. Alright. So, so what can I do now? Yeah, How do it. I do it? Make this it easy it. for me, Dr. Yeah, Saiba. But please I'm, give me I'm guiding, I'm guiding all the ummies and the wives and the sisters and all ladies across the Pakistan. Ke or even men who cook. Men who cook, ke whatever you are cooking, there is no need of refined yeah. oil in True. it. Allah Ta'ala has been given up oil and fat in, included in our diets like in, in meat there is a fat, yeah. in eggs there is a fat, nuts there is a fat. So why can't we put those things inside our uh, meal yes. and uh, uh, use instead of refined oil to cut down the refined yeah. oil. And, is and it you know for all of those also? women, sisters yes. and everybody you know who yes. Dr. Hina just gave a message please make sure that you do not cook anything in your mind okay. Yes. You know it's better to ask every time please. <laughs> Yes. And, and also, Shazad, you will find this tradition, especially in the KPK and Balochistan too, that they do not put oil into yes. their uh, yeah. meat, right? So they yeah. cook it in the natural oil or the charbi. Charbi may be bagale. And that's very yummy. I it's think it's very more tasty. dangerous though. No? No, no. no it's, it's a The lesser, animal fat. So it's uh -huh. a lesser oil. Now. There's an increase in triglyceride. Uh, you know, I that's can, more dangerous. I, I can make it clear. Sure. I always encourage climate and sustainable diet. Climate eat with your region and a climate okay. seasonal and regional so kpk near kpk people live in mountains there are cold weather yeah. so they need to the body need to sustain and the fat provide True. their warm but here in karachi here in islamabad it's not a very cold weather so we so don't require that animal fat <laughs> they require that animal fat yeah. we require the lean protein here yeah. just because we are in a warm climate and so what are, are the sources of lean protein <laughs> It's chicken, it's egg, it's it's a beef, lean beef, it's a okay. fish, it can be nuts, it can be green vegetables. Mm -hmm. These are the proteins. It can be exactly. seeds, flax seeds, yes. uh, you can say pumpkin seeds, you can say uh, basil seeds. Beans These are well, the yes. beans, yeah, beans are the good protein. The balanced protein and balanced fats Lentils. all wow. around us. So walk, and diet. Lean meat, you know, I, I think that's something which we require and, as and well. Also, also, Shazad, does it ever happen to you? So, whenever we are feeling hungry, so is yummy food always a healthy food? Because the first thing that comes into <laughs> my mind is the gear, samosa, pakore, and all yeah. of these fried items. So, uh, an apple never comes into my mind, or a peach never comes into my mind whenever I'm feeling hungry, right? So, uh, I want to ask is uh, yummy food always a healthy food? And uh, why is that? I mean, is my brain wired like that, or is it only me which is experiencing yes. this? Do you experience this? I do. Yes. 
guys. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Actually, the thing is that whatever we fantasize in our mind, <laughs> first our mind clicks what we are going to eat and what our body is craving. Actually, what the nutrition is required to our body, we need to train our mind first. You know what? I can give you my example that what I am fantasized with always eating apples, cherries, peaches. Whenever I am on road trip, instead of buying those, those paratha yeah. and chai from dhabas yeah. and anda fry and everything in the oh. breakfast when I am traveling Pakistan by road, I stop my car near to uh, fruit wala uh, thela yeah. and I buy peaches and apples. I always fantasize by that. Ke, oh, stop it. I said yeah. my husband, please gaadi roke. I want to eat apple. I want to eat peaches. So this is always comes in my mind before coming to pakoda. Yeah. And, Start training it's your yummy. mind. Yeah, mean, it's you yummy. Need to, I mean, yeah, you, you need to. My dadi that. used to eat yeah. it. You know, yeah. whenever it used to rain. But my yeah. dadi was really fat. You know, you know in a later <laughs> age, she couldn't even walk. Oh, you know, so I think that it's best that we think about peaches now. <laughs> I, yeah, think, exactly. I think it's going to be wonderful. But yes. you know, every time there's an alternate to that as well. I think yes. nuts can actually uh, do wonderfully well. Yes. God forbid, if you yeah. had to kind of munch somewhere in between, yeah. I think it can contribute to you too as well. Exactly. But while we speak of it, you know, obviously just think of it. You know, you're traveling, it's raining outside and there you see this wonderful daba. A lot of trucks parked over there. You get a half fried egg that too based on a paratha and then you put sprinkle a little bit of salt little bit of black pepper you okay. take a nawala and then you you know a little bit of yolk of the egg as well and you put ah, it in your wow, mouth and wow, a wow. sip of tea my god <laughs> i feel like having it now uh, why why can I you explain peaches like this to me yes. okay go ahead oh my <laughs> god a wonderful card is in front of me then i took those peaches wash in in a fresh river Ooh. which is so cold Kande. and then i take a bite and Ooh. click my selfie picture and put it on instagram that hey guys i'm having those peaches and having a coconut water along yeah. it it's Beautiful. I think it is I, I beautiful. Think, and you know, when, when, when you're going yes. to say it, obviously people will be like, yes, obviously, it's, that's beautiful. It's, but but it's I think when you're thirsty, you can certainly imagine having a very cold watermelon or melon in the first place because they're source of the water too, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, but I think when we are hungry, so we had to develop those taste buds where we would uh, <laughs> desire peaches and mangoes and bananas and strawberries and whatnot. Exactly. Um, so, Dr. Hena, what is exactly a healthier lifestyle or healthier diet according to you. Okay. As I said earlier that climate and seasonal diet, right. eat regional and eat seasonal. I'm okay. explaining it like that. Whenever you are going outside and if it's a weather, uh, cold weather, you need to keep a bottle of mixed dry fruits with raisins and nuts and, and uh, dates inside that and yeah. you have to put it in your pocket or in uh, your car yeah. or in your purse yes. or anywhere and then munch it. Exactly. You can have a cup of black tea or a green tea or yeah. a tea, black tea. Yeah. A uh, very little bit of milk, not a yeah. dhuth patti Pakistani no sugar, right? chai. No sugar, just because we have already taken sugar from dry fruits yeah. and uh, raisins and the dates. It's the first point that we can include it. So you've taken away all the pakoras, you've taken <laughs> away all the samosas, chanas and whatever we eat yeah. and prathas Nuggets. and andas. Now yeah. you've taken away... Um, you know all the luxury we had in our life that yes. we cannot we cannot do that you know how do you think people are going to like you ah, you know people pe like okay because my producer in my age she's like yeah I so wanted to have chana chaat today chana chaat is okay you can take carry chana chaat without papri and without lot of yogurt and lot of extra uh, chips and spice and spices are good spices okay. give your metabolism a boost a true, kick true, true. Uh, spices good for your digestion if you are using it in a limited quantity and uh, what kind of spices you are using true. if you are using just chili flakes throughout the day yes it's going to hurt your gut lining true. so another point is gut friendly diets first of all recognize your gut, your digestive system, yogurt. whatever, but some people doesn't tolerate yogurt, then some people yeah, yeah. doesn't tolerate yeah. their yeah. lactose, so yeah, you need to be aware of your body, your body is customized by Allah Ta'ala, exactly. you need to first learn it, what am I using and what is suitable for me. But my customization, Alhamdulillah, allows me to eat everything, you know, so everything I see, I eat, that, right. that, that, perfect. That, that, that's, that's my perfect. kind of diet, but what I believe in is, now, you know, so this is something which I would want you to address very seriously, and that is that, so a lot of my friends, they would be like, why don't you diet, cut down and whatnot. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, first of all, Alhamdulillah has given me a bigger structure and would want to be like that. Yes. Number two, you know, so what I do is that I say that, okay, whatever I eat, I try to make sure that I burn it while I'm exercising. Perfect. So I would go to the gym every single day and make sure that I burn whatever I've eaten. Do you think that it's a fine strategy? Because 
I, I do know for sure that, you know, 70% yes. is your diet and 30% is exercise. is exercise. So how do we manage that? God forbid that if somebody yeah. has this habit of eating a lot, mm -hmm. how do they manage it with different items which are healthier, which add right. on to the protein and mm -hmm. lean muscle? First of all, uh, abs made in kitchen, not in gym. Yeah. And it has been proven that you are eating a lot and you, you think that you burn and actually you lose weight. No, you can maintain. But if you are eating more than your calorie requirement, mm. you will not at all maintain. You will uh, eventually gain weight. So men require 2,500 right? calories a day, right? It, again, it depends your it height depends structure, BMI, your yeah. body, mm -hmm. your BMI, yeah. your BMR. It's not depend like ye, it's on Google and you are following okay, it. Okay. It's never a, a, a uniform rule for right. your weight maintenance right. and for your calorie so, so, requirement. So can we have like chocolates or candy sometime? You know, yes, you know, once you know. a while you can have it. How once much a of week. It? Once a week you can have a bar of chocolate okay. or or it, it's not a day that you are uh, starting from the morning that chocolate, then afternoon cake, then evening <laughs> pizza, then so night uh, uh, chicken fried. Or No, it, it you need to segregate things okay. and then you need to select that what is your priority what are your taste buds required today what is your binge eating today True. you need to first yeah. recognize <laughs> what you are eating so again yeah. the thing is that that you need to go and check that whatever thing suits you sometimes some food give you a suddenly bloated feeling mm. and then you go to gym and you run here and there and you see why I'm looking obese today and yesterday it wasn't mm. so this is kind of a thing you need to first recognize around you and, how and, do you and also Shazad yeah. I would want to ask you so if she has uh, prohibited you from eating chocolates and pizzas would you agree with her or would you agree that in the first place I've, like I've already done that you know because imagine that I think that the difficult part was that okay I was working out I was yes. looking after everything I was taking a healthier diet yes. but Alhamdulillah when you have three <laughs> little daughters and, you, and one walks in she's having a yes. sip uh, fr from a juice bar and imagine so the other one comes in she's got cookies in her hand the other one comes in she has a complete basket daddy it's my birthday today let's <laughs> cut the cake so you like okay somewhere in between yes. you know you and, get and, and confused do you, do and you you'll eat, fall prey to you that. Eat, do you eat their chips and chocolates? No, I so, so I have stopped now <laughs> Alhamdulillah it's been two weeks now and I, I had to kind of continuously convince <laughs> yeah. myself that okay if I keep on doing that <laughs> it's not even healthier for my teeth so yeah, imagine yeah. that yeah. you know uh, one or two of my tooth actually kind of came really? off as well just because of the fact that I was uh, eating so much sweets you know just yeah. before sleeping so my doctor said hey you know what what are you doing so i had to go through yes. and kind of get myself fillings as well yes. so yeah, very quickly exactly. for all of those people who are struggling to diet mm -hmm. because what i have experienced about diet is that you know so just i think if we go back a year or two years you know i was six kgs down my weight which i am right now so imagine that that, that was the point when i would only take three meals and that's it nothing other than that but taste is something so addictive that gradually it yes. won't even let you notice that you are getting addicted to yes. it. And it's yeah. most of the time sugar. Yes. Yes. So how do you think people can kind of confuse their brain by taking some alternate food which is sweeter and healthier? Yes, the alternate food Allah Ta'ala provided at a so lot of <coughs> dates Sorry. and raisins mm. and everything. Mm. You can make their paste and use as a staple every day. Yes. Okay. And again, if you want to cut down your uh, food intake, cut down your calorie f calories from that. You can be vegan for a few weeks. Okay. Yeah. Then you will be automatically on your track. You know, protein has, meat has lots of calorie. Fat has lots of calorie. So whatever, whenever it's a part of a comparison between between fats and sugar, I always advise that you can have a teaspoon of sugar every day and cut down all refined fats. Okay. That's going to helpful helpful for your weight loss journey wow. a lot. It's very easy to just go for a steamed vegetable for two weeks and three weeks and this give you the good nutrition as well. Your skin will be glowing yeah. and you will be consuming less calorie every day. Ultimately, you will be burning more if you are taking less calories. True. And, and you were certainly addressing that issue of bloating as well yes. so what are the major causes of bloating usually yes again your gut is a gut lining is a main major concept that your enzyme are not producing the, those digestive juices which the, that food can be digested okay. and that is different person to person you cannot uh, give a uniform example of this you need to come to clinic to address that problem okay, what kind of a particular food group is not suitable for me okay. oh, right. so this is the major problem right. so some blood tests needs to be run yes and, you know, few only tests then. 
a test especially not required few clinical i mean consultation and a session should be required so we can uh, diagnose so consider that it's a session so it's you know if you, if you are if you are to help me what yes. will be your line of questions yeah yeah like okay if you eat a uh, chana yesterday yeah. that uh, how do you feel if you said to me that i felt like heavy and a bloated and a gassy that maybe i will again ask you to eat today a kidney beans so okay. i will uh, give you an alternate i i will alternate that whether the dals are the problem or the legumes are the problem what yeah. is the lentil are the problem or the legumes okay. are the problem what is the major problem or either both wow that's what right. and very quickly right. because you know i go to the gym regularly alhamdulillah so i make sure that you know i lift weights yeah. beyond my capacity and there's this mindset that only if i'm going to eat a chapati it will give me that power which yes, will help yes, me yes. to lift weights yeah. as well and usually it does happen you know yes. so when i stop That's eating true. chapati i would not yeah. have th that energy because yes. carbohydrates are it's a major a, source a of energy yes. so how do you think that we can have an alternate to a chapati because i've seen in my life when i used to diet that if mm -hmm. i would control my chapati intake and rice intake you know all of a sudden yes. the weight right. starts yes. to go down exactly rice 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 is very helpful for weight loss and the chapati if you are eating wheat ki chapati it has gluten and again it's retain water in your body so it stop losing it's stop you to being losing your weight all right. and instead of wheat you can use oats oats chapati it's more helpful you can use it and yes the one major factor before lifting weights if you are not losing your fat ultimately you will be bigger in size True. you will not looking lean body so True. first uh, cut down your fat intake then, be in a lean position then start lifting your weight in the gym not yeah. before that whenever a client came to me and then they said that we are doing crossfit and weight lifting i said stop doing it right now first be on your like weighing skill whatever is your goal and then start doing your body shaping and muscle uh, muscle building lekin zamane ka itna bojh hai hamare kaandhon pe ab hum pehle lean karenge to gadbad ho jayenge but thank you so much thank you so much miss sena for having a very cross pollination of ideas very enlightening discussion on what is holistic well being and i think shazad can also have a very good conversation regarding the gym and the diet because he's very particular about obviously. it obviously and if it was a, about a book obviously easy <laughs> german i think it would have been harder taking the lead but thank you so much thank you so much i completely understood what you said which is why you yes. know on my way back i'm just going to get a hot chocolate from butlers <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen you can do it once a week okay yeah. but thank you so much yeah. ladies and gentlemen for being thank with you so us much. you know it was lovely to be in yeah. conversation thank with you thank you, you so thank much miss hana and haja like always you've always been a wonderful colleague as thank well inshallah looking forward to tomorrow it's a rainy morning yes. over in islamabad time for us to kind of think about what we're going to do tomorrow and today until next time look after yourselves 1 2 3 good, good morning. morning i'm going to get my hot chocolate